Pimtech ISO 8s. Uh, actually, most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and they actually, there's no one right answer. You can kind of work around and figure it out according to what you need. But we'll start with Ghost, a character that standalone is great. But again, we're not building standalone character kits. We're building team character kits uh, to make the team work the best way. And this is a war team, whether it be offense or defense. So for that, uh, it kind of goes without saying, it's Striker. Why does it go without saying for Striker? Because when she gets her bonus attack, it reduces the speed bar by 25%. That's it. That means every basic she does on a vulnerable target is a 50% speed rewind. That's it. Right. We're done? We're good? Okay. Uh, I guess to be fair, yes, you could put Raider on her uh, since this attack does actually target everybody. Uh, but Fatal Flux and Intangible Strike are single target attacks. They don't chain. They don't really do anything. Uh, so it's not that big of a deal. Skirmisher is a reasonable attack um, because of how it works. But again, I cannot stress enough how important reducing speed bar is uh, in the game. If you've ever used any character that does it, you would know it's relevant. So the fact that she gets multi-attacks on anything that will also reduce speed bar, uh, so incredible, so high impact. If that ever changes, if that's a bug that needs to be fixed... So be it, but right now it's like Striker or nothing. Uh, Yellow Jacket, I have him set to Skirmisher, uh, again, mainly because while this attack does hit multi-targets, um, it's the only one that actually does damage. Like, this attack hits one target, and it doesn't actually do damage, so it can't crit. This attack does hit multiple times, so it can crit. Um, I think it's reasonable to put Raider on him. I think Striker is fine. I have him set to Skirmisher, because I do want this to also be able to remove or place a vulnerable on a target. Um, other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. He doesn't need the survivability. He has a pretty decent survivable kit. The team in general has uh, a decent chunk of evades. Uh, Fortifier is okay. He doesn't have the health for healer. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident that like Skirmisher is the way to go on him. Uh, even though you can get a little bit of value on Raider, because you're going to get Raider value out of other characters. For example, Wasp. Uh, Wasp's basic attack is a guaranteed to hit two people on a chain, so that's one pop on for Raider on her. Uh, number two is a bonus attack that applies stun, and if any of them hit, it could stun. So, you know, Raider, uh, and then Flight of the Wasp hits all characters, cannot be countered. Now, it says she's Striker here, but I'd like to point out that I have not done anything on her uh that was just something that happened she is a raider character she is constantly hitting multiple characters um it makes the most sense now skirmisher is a very reasonable option on her as well um both putting the buffs uh on and removing the buffs from characters are reasonable options so it really depends on what you want ant-man to have and on the other side of this i have ant-man as striker uh, why? Because I clicked the button. I don't know. This wasn't reasonable. Uh, I do like Striker to because the attack will copy a positive effect, clear it, and then give it to Wasp. Um, I don't know if it gives the second one Wasp on the attack, but it definitely does copy or remove the effect on assist. So it has been a very reasonable attack, uh, ISO 8 bonus attack for there. Gum up the works. Uh, again, another reasonable for Skirmisher attack you can have on the character. Um... But the team doesn't really need much as far as buff removal is concerned, so uh, a little bit more damage isn't nothing. Uh, that said, this is only a single target attack, so that's fine. Another thing to point out is if you do have the tier 4 to always gain an assist from Wasp, that means Wasp might be better as a skirmisher. Uh, if you don't always have it, then it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Um, just be able to assist and clear a buff if need be, or put the vulnerable on. Uh, it does work very well as a two-piece, very similar to Proxima and Corvus Glaive, if she has Skirmisher, because he'll attack, she'll assist, put the uh, uh, vulnerable, and then he'll attack again. That said, as a general character, Wasp just uh, has a better overall damage output from Raider than anything else. Uh, Stomp is the first uh, AoE on the team. Uh, it doesn't do much damage, but it does apply slow. You can make an argument for Raider, but 
it would just be on this one attack, so it's not great. You can make an argument for Skirmisher, not unreasonable. Uh, I just think that increasing his damage overall and making an extra attack with Scrappy Fighter is generally better. Uh, there's no real reason to look into too much detail, but I will say on non Pimtech Hero Ally, on non Pimtech Hero Ally, 20%. If it's a Pimtech Ally turn, 40% chance to gain assist now. Uh, and if you don't, Yellow Jacket does. All this stuff just basically means uh, getting a little bit extra value out of the assists is relevant. So Skirmisher is a very reasonable investment on Ant-Man. Uh, again, I do think it depends on how you build your Wasp. So because I don't have a Skirmisher, I think it's totally reasonable for me to make him Skirmisher on the team. Or because a Wasp isn't a Skirmisher. And kind of chain through from there. But again, this team does have a lot of high impact options. There's no one right or wrong setup. It really just depends on where you want to be with the characters. I think Wasp is best as Raider because she's always multi-hitting. Because of that, I think he gets better with Skirmisher. Um, and then I think that Skirmisher is good on Yellow Jacket. And they're both, whenever any of them assist, will remove a buff. It's a really fun thing. As for Stature, I think Stature gets... Uh, she's the only protector in the game that I think kind of needs Fortifier. She just doesn't have the health. She's like an evade protector. She doesn't have a lot of resources. Now, again, I don't have any investment in her, so I'm actually looking to other people's uh, information about, like, oh, well, I have a high invested stature, and she sucks. So, yeah, all right, that's fair. Um, a lot of what her kit is is the evades, uh, both her and her team. So she is an evade protector, kind of like in World of Warcraft, where, uh, you know, rogues can tank, but only until they get hit once. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. I don't think she's she has this, the health pool to justify... A reasonable uh, investment healer is not necessary for this entire team they tend to sustain themselves relatively well but uh, if so it might be end game healer on her instead of fortifier for right now fortifier will help her stay alive long enough that your team will get its attacks and multi attacks off um, and she's reasonable character uh, outside of it but none of her attacks this is a target primary target so crit ain't gonna help too much this is primary and adjacent, relatively reasonable, um, attack primary target and flip, skirmisher and striker are reasonable on her just because of how their kits work, but again, I think survivability on her is most important, and then afterwards you can worry about uh, value, kind of like how uh, Scarlet Witch literally doesn't matter, so just put whatever you think is right, but uh, you can't quite go wrong. Um, so for her, it's like fortifier followed by... Uh, Striker followed by Skirmisher uh, is a priority, but as and as Fortifier becomes less relevant, Striker and Skirmisher become more based on the rest of your team. Now, again, the only ones that are pretty obvious are Ghost and, of course, Stature. Yellow Jacket, uh, Wasp, and Ant-Man are kind of your, well, what do you need? Do they need to be critting more? Do they need more control? Do they need more uh, outward damage? And that's where you move on from there. You'll notice that I do not have high investment in these characters because I have been testing. And I have not found anything to be conclusively perfect. So maybe you have. Comment below and let me know what you found for the Pym Tech team to make them absolutely positively amazing. Hopefully it's enough. Hopefully whatever you found was reasonable enough to uh, uh, cause success. They are an adequate team on war defense and war offense. Um, but so far, this is kind of what I see being relevant, uh, and, uh, is, as far as war defense is concerned, anyway. Anyway, have a good night, have a great day, I've been Tony Skinjili, and I'll catch you later.